2011, you know, uh, was when I got sick with type one. Yeah, I lost everything, yeah. and then you know, ended up going pro after after I battled the sickness and the depression and all that stuff. Yeah, I noticed you asked our producer here for uh, a can of a uh, soda, just in case uh, uh, a blood drop or blood sugar drop would happen. Mm -hmm. How often does that happen to you, being being type one diabetic? Man, it it can happen zero one day, but then it can happen five, six times the next day. And the the goal is that it happens consistently or mm. less often. Mm. So, and how you do that is you you have to master food. Like I was a nutritionist before I was type one diabetic, but as a nutritionist after being type one, I mean, I've really learned, any, right? Yeah, wow. food is like the back of your hand. You got to, you know, you've got to dose. I don't have my insulin on me, but you've got to dose insulin and inject yourself every time you eat so oh. where i used to eat and kind of graze and snack or just go like now i gotta wait sit down count the macros on my plate right count the carbs the even the fat and the protein which is a lot of type ones don't do but I, i'm very meticulous with that and that's why i've balanced it and that's why i was able to become the first type one diabetic to ever even make it to olympia and then I'm third place with other guys with working pancreases and they're not backstage injecting themselves wow. to absorb their carb up and all that. So, I mean, it, to, to go low is not necessarily a bad thing. You just want to have balanced blood sugar so it's not like a roller coaster mm -hmm. or, yeah, you're going to have a miserable life. Like, you won't, you talk about being able to talk on the podcast, you won't be able to hold a normal job. And that's where a lot of these type <sighs> ones have, they, they degrade their life and type two diabetics do this too. Mm -hmm. Because they're operating at less performance than what they should be. And they don't know it because they don't have someone, you know, preaching in their ear saying, oh, you're better than that. And you can live a, a, a high peak performing life, right. if not even better than everyone else. Because right. if you're like me, you learn that, you know, this was, this was a tragedy at one point, but I turned into a triumph by yeah. mastering food understanding macronutrients, getting really in tune with my body. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's always going to, I'm going to have this disease forever. But the thing is, you know, what do you do with the cards you're dealt, right? Like, yeah. you know, you, you can have a bad hand in poker. Sure. Right. But you still win though. But yeah, you can you still, still win, you can still sure. win right? Uh, the, you know, the area of diabetes is affected even on my end on the life insurance side of things because we have clients that want to take care of the families. They want to provide generational wealth. They want to Make sure the mortgage is taken care of in case something happens them, but they have diabetes uh, or, or they're later on in life and they had had a, a, a foot uh, amputated. So what, what, what are some things people can be in being uh, proactive? So how do you test for it? Uh, how do you not be reactive to it? And then I want to ask you some follow up questions about breaking down some macros, especially if you. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's just all about number one. Let's let's talk about you right now, uh, the, the potential person you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Hypothetical. Yep. Number one, you've already grown up. So let's think about the youth. Everyone in your life you should educate on preventing type 2 diabetes because it is preventable. Whoever, whatever doctor, whoever's telling you it's genetic that it runs in your family, they're lying to you, all right? Yeah. The way your family eats is genetic. Your culture, uh, Filipino, like sure. Asian, Spanish, white, black, all these, they all have cultural ways they eat, mm -hmm. right? And it, that can start when you're born, right? Your yeah. parents can misfeed you yeah. and they don't even know mm -hmm. because it's it's in your family's culture. Oh, we feed them this and this and this. Yeah. Well, you've got to educate yourself and educate the youth. And that's what I do. It's not easy. It's not always fun, yep. but it is fun when you look at your 15 year old and they're a healthy peak performing sure. nutrition guru who's like, <laughs> oh, no, if friends want to go to McDonald's, you're like, no, I'm not yeah. going to McDonald's. Like, yeah. you guys go ahead and go to McDonald's. I'm going to go over here to the convenience store. I'm going to pick up some boiled eggs and whatever. And I, you don't, people don't need to be freaks like that. Yeah. But, but the knowledge is how you avoid the type two. So a person that's tr just that's dealing with type two diabetes, realize number one, what you're going through, educate the youth so that they don't go through it so we can stop this generational curse. And then is, is drinking a lot of fats, a lot of sugars. Is that what sort of triggers uh, diabetes? It, 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 it's a, it's a lot of, it's accumulation of a lot of things, but it's basically you just look at inflammation and that's where you have to educate yourself. Like well, what, what's inflammatory? What do I eat? What do I drink? That's inflammatory alcohol. Yeah. It's very inflammatory, you know, processed sugars, inflammatory processed food. Everything's packaged, you know, uh, your seed oils, all inflammatory, like grapeseed, olive oil. 
uh, well, olive, olive oil is fine, but it needs to be, you know, should be a good form. Like try to try okay. to get healthy extra virgin olive oil. Actually, but like, okay, like yeah. people get tricked at like, here's what they get tricked in thinking canola oil is healthy. Yeah, canola yeah. oil is very inflammatory. It's in all the packaged food I eat. I mean, just got off vacation. It's not like I'm yeah. one of these dudes who's like, oh, I don't ever sure. eat that stuff. But so I know, the resorts. <laughs> yeah, I've educated myself that it is unhealthy. So I try to avoid it and I try to get my kids to avoid it. You know, it's because knowledge, when you know something's bad for you, if you continue to just consume it and consume it, well, then you're just ignorant. Right? Yeah, you yeah, should, yeah, yeah. And people don't want to admit that, but you, yeah. you should know things that these inflammatory foods and overeating and not exercising is gives you at a risk of having type 2 diabetes, but you can reverse it. Mm -hmm.